Hi there, I'm Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and um, welcome to my little tutorial that I'm going to give to you today about the picnic blanket that is a pattern that has been shared on the Yarnspirations website. Um, I'm very excited to have this pattern be a nationally published pattern because I've been making gingham blankets now for about the last two years in hopes to become a grandma. Um, you can read my whole story and my little project that I started on my blog, daisyfarmcrafts.com. But anyway, this is just a sample of one of the gingham blankets I've made in the past, and I have tutorials for that already. But today, I will specifically show you how to get started on your picnic gingham blanket, which uses the colors um, soft blue, and royal blue and white and this is for Karen Simply Soft. All the details are on yarnspirations.com and I will put the links in the um, comment part, whatever, down, down below on YouTube and you'll be able to access that. I um, so, but of course, you're free to make this blanket in any color that you want. Other things that you'll need is a size I hook a tapestry needle, which is one of those blunt type needles with a really large eye and just a pair of scissors. So thank you all for stopping by. It's nice to meet you. I um, hope you'll come by my website and see other gingham blankets that I have if you're interested in making those. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here we go. I have chained 26. And that is a pattern repeat approximately of five plus one. If you want to make this blanket bigger than the baby size blanket I did, all you'd need to do is chain, say, a number of 135 or 145 plus one. Um, and keep that last number on it odd because you everything is in blocks of five, so you want the first color to be the last color. And you'll do that if you keep the number an odd number, meaning num you know you want 125 plus one chains instead of 120 plus one chains, if if that makes sense. Okay, so I've chained 125 plus one, which counts as the turning chain, and I'm just working a single crochet into the first five um, stitches, the second chain from the hook, and then the remaining. Four, so that you have a little block of five single crochets. But before I finish that fifth single crochet, I am going to, one, two, three, four, here we are on my fifth one. I am going to bring that white yarn forward and I'm going to grab my soft blue, place it over the hook, just like a normal adding in yarn, pulling through. Now I'll leave this blue tail to the back and do nothing with it. Pick up my soft blue, and I'm going to crochet the next five chains and crochet over the white tail. So that's what I mean when I say I carry the yarn along with me. So there's one, two, three, Four, and here's my fifth stitch and what I'm going to do is now drop my soft blue to the back and pick up my white again and pull through on the fifth stitch with the new color okay now I'll be crocheting over the pale blue so I insert my hook go under the pale blue grab the white and complete my stitch there's the first one I'm going to do this for five stitches. Oops. There's one, sorry, one, two, three, four, and here's my fifth one. Now, before I pull up that blue, I want to make sure that my white is staying forward. This will keep the yarn from twisting on you. Very important to learn that little trick and get comfortable with it because you don't want twisted yarn at the end. It just adds time to the blanket. 
And you want to have this be really comfortable and be able to do this, you know, in your lap while you're watching TV. So here we go. I'm going to work the next five. And I'm just still continuing to crochet over the white and be able to pull this up when I need it. Here's the fifth stitch. Drop the soft blue to the back, pull up with the white, and pull through. Grab that, and I'm on my way to the last five stitches. One. Now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to, I'm not doing anything tricky at all, to just bring the yarn around the end of the work. You'll see. Just chaining one, turning my work like a page in a book. That's what my mom always taught me. And here we go. This light blue just gets simply tucked behind and I'm going to crochet over it. I wanna keep the bulk of the blanket all the same. Yes, technically you could drop that light blue and finish this last block of white without it, but I think it would eventually just mess with your tension a little bit, and it's just such a tiny little ways. I like to keep it consistent. Okay, so here we are again. I am going to pull my white yarn forward. I'm keeping the white forward, then pull through with the blue, okay? Get that all worked out. Now go in and continue to crochet over that white yarn. So it's all ready for me to use. I need to get that going. Okay, now sometimes you might have trouble um, with your tension and maybe this little white is showing through. I want you to just give it a little tug before you pull it up and use it. Sometimes that helps straighten it all out and make and it disguises the yarn just a little bit more but I do want you to know that yes little bits of yarn do show through that's totally normal especially when you use white yes you can see just a little bit of this soft blue showing through but I have found when the blanket is completely finished it really doesn't bother me and what little bits do show through just kind of add to the gingham effect. At least that's what I've told myself. <laughs> but really, I've enjoyed these blankets and I just, I think they're beautiful. Um, I can show you after we do this sample what I mean on the teal one that I showed you, um, how you really just can't see that yarn after the blanket's finished. Yes, it's there. You can see it while you're making it, but after the whole blanket's done, it really doesn't become noticeable. So. Okay, here we are. Now, I hope you've gotten uh, the hang of this because what I'm going to do is pause. I will finish the remaining three rows. You're gonna go five rows high and I'll pop back on and show you how to add in the royal blue color and how to alternate the pattern to make sure you're getting that gingham look. Okay, so I'll be right back. Finish up those rows. Okay, so how did your sample look so far? Did you get it? Um, you see what I mean? I could just barely, barely see the blue show through. It's totally normal to see little bits show through. You're not doing anything wrong. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull through now, sorry, with the royal blue and cut off with the white. So one thing that I have found, and that's, I already did that, sorry. I left myself a long tail, that's the white. I'm going to pull through with the soft blue and chain one and turn. And one thing that you can remember about gingham is the medium color that you choose is always used throughout the whole blanket. So you'll only ever be cutting off the white or the dark. So sometimes it's good to you know really decide what is your A, what's your B, and what's your C color. The B is always used in every row. Okay, 
So here we are, I'm just doing my first five and same thing, just putting that to the back and I'm grabbing my royal blue and I'm adding it in no different than any other kind of color chain. Just laying it over the hook and pulling it through and then making sure I've got the tail of that, not the tail, sorry, the soft blue will be crocheted over. I'm leaving the royal blue tail behind. So you kind of get that all situated. Go ahead into the stitch and underneath that soft blue just exactly like you've been doing and start with your single crochets. Now one thing I wanna say right here about your tension. Now if this is why you're doing a sample, if this has turned out to be way too tight for you, your blanket will turn out like a doormat and you need to go up a hook size. You do not have to stick with this size hook. Maybe you need a J and the opposite is true. If this is so loose and maybe you are uncomfortable and your yarn is showing through, you might need to be going down a size and use an H. And everybody has different tension. Um, as I've taught my daughter Hannah how to crochet, not well as she has you know, learned basically from herself just by reading what we've posted and um, designing her own blankets, we've found her tension is significantly looser than mine. She's always using smaller hooks than I suggest in the pattern. So that is another thing to learn about yourself with crochet is you know, what size hook works for you? And that will make a difference. So for me, it was an I, but I have done this project with a J because sometimes I find my um, tension gets a little bit too loose. It also depends on the stitch I'm using. Single crochets tends to um, work up pretty tight too. Now I will say that I have other blankets that are not all single crochet on my website. When you get this technique down and say you are not a fan of all single crochet blankets, which I've heard a lot of complaints like, ah, I, there's no way I could single crochet a whole blanket. Um, I have made them using the griddle stitch, the crumpled griddle stitch. I've got a um, modified half double crochet stitch, that's what I've called it. I've made them, the only stitch I don't like using is just double crochet. Um, right now I'm working on one that is in extended single crochet so that um, the stitch stays um, uh, locked down, not the stitch, the yarn being carried. I find the yarn being carried on double crochet shows quite a bit and that's why I just I don't like just regular double crochet. I usually modify that stitch somehow. So that is just some tips that I've come across in, you know, in making all of these blankets. Um, things that I've learned as I've gone. So I just want to show you a little bit of what's normal with this blanket of you know, and the yarn showing through so that you don't think you're doing anything wrong, because you're not. <laughs> but, you know, you'll see the yarn being carried through in, in little bits here and there. But honestly, I promise you, on the finished product, it is gorgeous. Now, the picture you're seeing, I actually don't have that blanket here in Arizona with me. I mailed that up to those, the Yarnspirations. Their, their company is in Canada. And I, I mailed that blanket to them so that they could professionally photograph it and have their pattern testers uh, remake it and write the pattern up professionally. So on my website, I always tend to just explain my patterns. Um, I do that so, you know, that just seems to be my style. And it, because the, honestly, when I started this website, it was just for the intention of having my kids learn and I wanted to make sure that I explained it clearly enough for them to learn it because I knew that, you know, reading patterns sometimes is hard and um, that was all. So sometimes, um, you know, I do my best writing out patterns, but I'm bo by no means a professional uh, crochet pattern writer at all. <laughs> um, that's why I say I'm just simply sharing my blankets. 
Okay, so I hope you've just kind of been able to watch as I go along. I hope I'm going slow enough for you to see this. When I get done with these five blocks of color, of course, I'll be cutting off the royal blue and I'll be adding back in the white. And um, that's how it all just tends to work out. Um, and it's really just repetitive after that. You'll just be switching these colors back and forth, making sure that the medium color is used throughout the whole blanket. Now I did put an all single crochet border on this and I think it's uh, pretty straightforward. I used the white. I just worked one single crochet into each stitch around and I worked three single crochets into each corner and um, I did about five rounds of that just for a nice white border. So nothing, nothing tricky at all. And that of course is explained on my blog post. Um, I don't believe they included it in the pattern on uh, yarn inspirations. So, but you feel free to put any border you want around this blanket. I have an eyelet one, I have a pom-pom one, I have, you know, you could do anything. You could tie little tassels on this, little fringe, it would be darling. Anything that you want to do. So, okay, I think that's enough giving you, I hope. Um, I have other tutorials. Check my YouTube channel for other gingham blankets and other um, helps and tricks. I guess, let me just, right before I go, I wanted to show you that, um, what I mean by, you know, when you get finished, you really can't see that yarn. This is a stitch called the crumpled griddle. So if the all single crochet doesn't work out for you, you can use this stitch and um, you just barely, barely see bits of the yarn carry through. But the whole thing as a finished product, you really can't see any of it. And it just gives the illusion of gingham and I think it's a really, really pretty blanket. So, okay, that's enough for me. Thank you for stopping by. And I uh, thank you as always for all of your likes and comments and love for our crochet account. Thank you so much.